and this kind of goes to my next question. I wanted you to talk a little bit about the – something we always say when we talk is you need to make sure that your skills actually transfer in the game. Yeah. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about that that game transferability and, like, from a coaching perspective, how you – make sure that that's actually occurring because a lot of people I look at because I see some of these other guys that do their skill videos and stuff like that and everyone advertises that right yeah. like game yeah. applicable skills and all this kind of stuff yeah. but there's it's one thing to say it it's one another thing to actually do it because people will say yep everything that we're going to do is going to apply to a game and then you watch their their actual drill that they post and it's 15 cones with two passes and a spinning jump and then a shot on net at the end or whatever. So I want you to talk a little bit about that, that kind of game transferability and how what that actually means from a from a coaching and a and a skill development perspective. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a good question because it's um, you, you could say we everything we do resembles a game. Yeah, you're skating and you're you have a puck on your stick and you're shooting the puck and you're passing the puck, but it's actually not what you how you would do it in a game. Because mm-hmm. I'll watch. You know, it's amazing. And this is what I'm aware of. Like, if I'm going to put a drill on the ice and say, this is what I do, I would make sure I dial everything in that, like, this is actually how I do it. Because when I watch, and probably to the naked eye, and naked, eyes can be naked, uh, to the naked eye, it's like, oh, that's a pretty intense drill. Like, and it could be intense, but, like, there's nothing about it that does resemble a game. And then if you look at, like, how they're – like I, I'm just thinking of one that you've shown me a couple of times. I'm like, well, okay, that's cool. But like, would you ever come out of that turn like that with one hand and you'd be like hurrying up to get something done, but like you, you've never, you're not protecting the puck at all. If you went actually turn that way in a game, anytime you're going to get your head taken off. If you actually shot a puck like that, like you're shooting wrong. Like, I don't care what, because you have all the time in the world, you're telegraphing and it's way out here or whatever. And I could pick out all the little details that are wrong. So is there, from the simplest form, we can do, we can do a, uh, just a blue line series passing drill. And I can, you know, we're teaching from there. Like, like here's an example, right? <clears throat> guys will pass the puck with a, with a, you know, sweep in the puck. And as I'm talking older guys, so it's just telling me that you're not giving a shit about how you pass. Mm-hmm. So I fixed just how to get the puck off. Like, I always want guys to do touch passes, not not just leave it because you're not working a skill, but a touch pass because in a game, if you can get good at touch passing, you, you, you're making plays quick all the time, always calling for pucks. So those are at the simplest form, you're teaching game situation stuff. <laughs> On every drill, I give them an example of how I want you to shoot the puck. Because if you look at most people when they shoot a puck at a drill in, in any normal circumstance, is especially in a practice situation, is there's not an intent so a lot of guys will just come in and it's the old inside foot telegraph in the, pa- the the shot and hoping it where you're shooting the score, but you're not really shooting the score. So I dial in on that every single time that your feet are moving. Like I might give them an actual particular shot and I want it done in this pattern and this is why and always the why with it. So that, like so in, from the start to the finish of every drill, I always ask the kids to make sure that they pick out one thing that they want to work on for the whole practice, like really focus on that. But then on every drill, make sure that, you know, you're getting a quick start, that you're getting a hard pass, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But like if you're shooting a puck, I want you to have an intention today and shoot the puck properly. That means you're moving the feet and all that kind of stuff. So that's like the very basic stuff. Yep. So like we were doing one the other day. It was, uh, so you'll see sometimes you'll see someone go collect a puck in the corner, right, on a dump in or a retrieval, offense, defense, whatever. And it's like, Go get the get the puck, and here's a pattern. Here's what I want you to do. Well, that's fine, but like, are you actually teaching how to retrieve retrieve a puck, like mentally, like are you shoulder checking and yes. all that stuff? Like a lot of guys will just do a fake for the camera, but it's like if you did that fake in a game, I just run you. <laughs> it's not obvious. So like teaching them how to do it, how to collect the puck so that they can make a play when it's on their stick turning the right way how to how to come out of turns how to create space how to weight transfer how to shoot the puck in that area maybe we can work on odd angle shots and stuff like that Um, but the bottom line is that at every point you should be teaching something that transfers into a game right but so you can and sometimes guys do it but they don't know they do it by accident but you have to teach why am i doing this drill why 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 Yes. So once the kids get why, then they actually understand a lot more. So for example, I was doing a station, not stationary, but like a, a, a movement drill yesterday for shooting in my station and for the, for the 30 minute skill part after the little mini games. And I was having them shoot 
keep collecting a puck from the forehand and just making a quick shift and then collecting one from the backhand, making a quick shift. And if, if you just do the drill, it looks fine. Right. But I was, I was making sure, like, because I, I always watch and let them fail or let them do something well and say, that's how, or this is where you need to get better. But it was like a, the simplest thing of, the first thing was, is I want you looking at my eyes the whole time. Like, grab the puck, keep your eyes on my eyes until you see, and, and like scan through me to see the net. <laughs> so they, there's like some bobbles at first, of course. But then they didn't bobble. So there's an improvement, number one. Then the second thing was I, I was not changing everybody's, but I was making it more efficient for them to get across the ice or make certain movements and loading patterns and stuff like that. So that in a game, they're maximizing their shot and they're always seeing options and stuff like that. So the difference is, is that you can just do the drill or you could do the drill with three, four different things that you can get better at. Exactly. So yeah. that's, that's, that's very important. So that every drill you should be doing, you should making some, uh, you should be making improvement every single drill. And then it's like shooting the puck as well. Like in that particular drill, it's, uh, you know, there's there's times where you need to lose contact with the puck to make contact with the puck. And there's other times where you should keep it, you should keep contact with the puck the whole time so that it comes off like a slingshot, depending on where you are and how you are, right? It's about hiding the puck in your feet. Like there's so many d different things that you can teach. And, and, and that's what makes you a good instructor. And then a good student's going to listen to all the little details and ask questions. Right. And the kids that do get markedly better mm -hmm. quickly so, so just i want to highlight a couple of things to what you're saying because you said a lot of stuff there but i think that people think meaning parents players and other instructors that aren't necessarily of the highest quality because they don't know how to process this kind of information to teach it properly they mistake running patterns or movement for game situation right so to your point, I could say, okay, you're going to go pick this puck up out of the corner, right? That's part of my drill. Any instructor can integrate that into one of their drills. You're going to go pick the puck out of the corner. And you could think as the instructor, because we're doing that, this is a game situation where you would go pick the puck up out of the corner. But to your point, if you don't explain or teach how to pick it up out of the corner properly, or how to pick it up off the wall, or how to take a rim properly... It's not game. You're not actually transferring that to the game. That's no, the just, difference. Just right? doing a pattern. And yeah, and that's the difference. Like <laughs> just because you're doing a pattern that at certain points could resemble something that happens in the game, that doesn't mean you're teaching game transferable skills, right? So you could rim a puck, but if you just get to go pick it up however you want and then turn off however you want and then go finish the rest of the cones however you want, you're not actually teaching the in-game part because as soon as you put pressure on that person or as soon as you put them in a situation where someone's coming to knock that puck off or get in your way or whatever the case is now you get to see where the issues are with that skill right and if you're not doing that if you're just letting the guy run the route that doesn't it's not game transferable anymore you've just removed that part of the skill building even though you're saying that it is you know and that's kind of one of the big differences that i've noticed even even with us like because I've been working here on and off for like 10 years. And even in the last, like just the last two and a bit since I started being here full time, I've even noticed that transition in how we talk about things together or you, you more than I, because you're the one on the ice. But when we just have conversations, it's the, the is this an actual game now? You know, because once you have your base level of skill, by the time you're like 14, 15, 16, it's like you can shoot the puck, you can stick handle, you can skate. You should have those down, right? So now we can either keep practicing things perfect, like you're saying, or we can say, how do we, how do we utilize this skill set in non-ideal circumstances? And this is the difference between like learning in school and learning in real life, right? This is the difference between experience and the textbook. Because when you solve a math problem in class, it's always perfect scenario. You know, everything is ideal cases and you assume all of these things. But when you get in the game, there's no assuming anything. You don't know what's coming. You don't know from what angle. You don't know how fast. You don't know any of those things. And you have to still be able to apply that skill set. Otherwise, it's no good. There's no there's no use for it, you know. And I think that's one of the big differentiators that I see with how you're doing things on the ice, you know. Yeah, it's a huge differentiator. But, but I'm always learning too, right? For sure. Because, yeah. I, you know, I, I try to stu not study the game. Like, I'm not a, a systems guy and watch all that. If you ask me to break down a whatever game, who's doing what, I like I got an idea, but like there's guys that are much better at that than me. But I could take like certain points of it, like the the, the many points of it, but I'm just not like there's I'm not the X's and O's guy. But anyways, well, one thing that I learned that was 
freaking phenomenal the other day that if I when I do this drill next week, people are going to say, what, what are we doing? But so I, I started doing a lot of uh, I really think that kids need to be better or better trained because it blows my mind a lot of times in OHL or whatever. I'll watch a kid. Let's say there's a board battle or a loose puck. I'll see someone coming on top of a stick. And like you get slashing or it's close to it or you break a stick or whatever. And it's like, it's kind of dumb. Not kind of, it is. So the skill, the art and the skill of getting under sticks to steal pucks, like I work on that a lot. You know, some of them I say, well, <laughs> you work on that? Yeah, yeah, I work on it a lot. I you know, teach how to take that top hand off as a guy sometimes. It's it's learning how to flick that stick and get pucks. Like when a, oh, you're getting a rim, there's ways that if you get a puck on the wall and you got pressure on you, so how do you take that rim? That's different than taking a rim with no pressure. So learning to stick your ass out and creating space. If I can feel that guy, I can control him. If I can't feel him, then I got to think. If his stick's in the way, how do I control that? Can I kick it with my foot or do I need to use my stick? Like all these different things, right? So I was doing this one, just like a very simple takeaway drill. So I was showing the kids the first time and I had Mitchie, who's 5'9", who's third round pick to the Leafs, goal scorer, heavy guy, right? So he's about 5'9", 200, right? So I said, Mitchie, here, let's just show the kids how to do it. So... I went, and I wasn't putting a lot of pressure on my stick, right? So underneath, took my puck like we were doing a drill. So I went to take the puck from him. I couldn't do it. Not because I couldn't do it. Not because I didn't have the skill to do it, because he is so heavy on his stick. Like, he has trained himself, like, because think about it. He had, so here's the thing. Not everybody's the same. So Aaron Ekblad can go in corners and use his reach. Dale Mitchell is five foot nine and he's stocky. So what does he have to do? He can't do the same thing as everyone else. So when this guy has taught himself, and he said he learned it in pro mostly, but he's taught himself that when he's controlling pucks and corners and stuff, that he has to put, if he's 200 pounds, he's got to put 400 pounds on the thing so no one could take it. So now he can control the puck with his body and be heavy on that stick and they can't lift. So I I learned because I've never had a stick that heavy. So I was like, wow. So I go, Charlie, go. Meet with him. Five minutes, learn this skill. Because not that not that Charlie necessarily will need that, right? But he's a big boy. He but plays. He, he a, definitely no, 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 no. That. But I'm not saying that he necessarily has to learn how to put 400 pounds on a stick. Oh, right. Yeah. Because his body is bigger. Yeah, yeah. But it definitely might be a skill that yeah. might be benefit him totally. Because right. now instead of being, see, skill is not necessarily getting in that corner and taking that puck and going chicky 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 boom coming out with the puck. That's right. Skill could be okay. Here we go. Getting your ass out, being heavy on that stick, and just being able to control with a heck of a lot less work. And then once you get where you want it, you put the puck where you need, or you can dart out. That's right. So it's not about. You see what I mean? That's a good point, man. Because skill. That's that's the other thing about skill, right? Skill. People think stick handling, ah. toe drag, bar down. Part like, of it. That's that's part of skill. Yeah. That's one element of skill. You know, but that guy that you can't get under his stick because he's so strong. The only the time, and this is funny too. That when I played. I started playing center in university. My yep. my second year in the playoffs, I <laughs> yep. remember I was playing a fourth line or a third line center through the through the playoffs. And I had my only job was to forecheck like a yep. you know what yep. and don't lose faceoffs, man. Mm-hmm. And this was the first time I ever learned that about being hard on your stick because mm-hmm. people say it, right? People yep. say you got to be hard on your stick. Be yeah, be heavy, all that kind of stuff. But until you experience doing it, so I had, I forget who it was that was teaching me because I wasn't always, an, I wasn't a natural centerman and whoever it was that was teaching me taking face-offs, it was that they were explaining like, dude, you're actually a pretty big kid. If you get low and you lean on your stick, yeah. you will not lose a face-off yeah. unless somebody outsmarts you yeah. to pick it off you, yeah. right? Yeah. No one's going to get on top, like in terms of a muscle to muscle battle, they won't win. And I remember I would do that. We would, it'd be a D zone draw and I'd be like, if this guy's going to play a little poke trick to get the puck around me yeah. I then a d's coming because they know i'm playing heavy on the face off yeah. i'm gonna lean on it and yeah. that was the first time i'd ever learned that skill yeah. and i was good at face offs out of nowhere i was yeah. not a natural centerman and it was like just because i'm heavy on my stick i'm good at face offs now that's a skill that's not so huge that, skill. it's not toe drag 360 deke on the goalie skill mm-hmm. but it's a skill yeah. you know and and that's a really good point 